Okay, let me try to explain this again. I apologize, it's so confusing. I, I really think it's not that complicated, but somehow there's confusion about uh, what we're up to. So, let me go back to the instructions that I sent. Everybody managed to get up to instruction 4 correctly. And uh, most people got part 7 correct, but we had a lot of trouble with this other part 4, 5, and 6, and then 8. So let's go to part 4 where we started encountering problems. The first is use the graph to estimate the maximum number of pixels between Callisto and Jupiter. So I want to go back to the graph and look at that guy. And notice that the number of pixels between Jupiter and any of the moons is the vertical scale here. So this guy is at 48 pixels, this guy is at 54 pixels. What's the maximum number of pixels away? Well, it's got to be these guys out here, right? 97, 97, those ones. So you know that the, the maximum number of pixels away has got to be in the neighborhood of 100. And then the question is, how many arc seconds is that? That's the next step, is to... Um, Using the scale factor, convert this to arc seconds. And some people were able to do that okay. They got arc seconds. But so far, nobody's turned in a report that had a correct distance between Callisto and Jupiter. So the idea here, and this is what I want to try to explain, is to go back to the book and use the uh, small angle formula. The idea is, you've got this thing out in space you're measuring, and you're so far away from it and the number of arc seconds between the ends of the thing you're measuring, whatever that is, is uh, the ratio of those two distances, the size of the thing and the distance away, times 2.06 times 10 to the fifth. That's a conversion factor, and I went over that in the slides, but I'm going to go over it again. The point is, the number of arc seconds divided by 2.06 times 10 to the fifth is the ratio of the distances, right? So, if we're measuring the distance between Callisto and Jupiter, we want to take the number of arc seconds divided by 2.06 times 10 to the fifth and multiply that by the distance between us and Jupiter. That gives us the distance in real space between Callisto and Jupiter. Now, to make that more concrete, what I want to do is to imagine we're an astronomer on Jupiter looking back at the Earth. So, to make that more concrete, I've cooked up in Callisto what it would look like if you were 5.4 AU away and you were looking back at the Earth through a telescope with a field of view of uh, about three arc minutes. This is what you'd see, and I've made a video of this, which I will also include. I'll t attach it onto this one. But the point is, that maximum distance between the Earth and the Moon turns out to be 97 arc seconds. Now that's coincidentally equal, roughly, to the number of pixels between Callisto and Jupiter, but that's a complete coincidence. Um, the key is that the 97 arc seconds plus the fact that it's 97 arc seconds and the fact that it's 5.4 AU means that we can compute the actual physical distance between Earth and the Moon. So let's see how that works. Now I'm going to try to use this calculator, which I never use, and I'm probably going to mess it up. But let me pull up the uh, small angle formula at the same time so we can refer to that. And we'll see if we can work it out. I'm looking for this distance. I want to take the angular diameter divided by this guy times that. Seven arc seconds divided by 2.06 times 10 to the fifth. Bingo. Okay, that gives me the ratio. This is the angle in radians, it turns out. All I've done is to convert that 97 arc seconds to radians. Now I need to multiply by the distance between me and Jupiter. So I'm going to multiply by 4, let's see, what was it? 5.41. Okay. Uh, how do I delete that? 5.41. One equals okay. That gives me now. That, that's not right though because that's in astronomical units. So this means the moon is, uh, you know, point zero zero two five astronomical units. I need to multiply by an astronomical unit. Well, that's um, times one hundred and forty nine 
times 10 to the 9 meters. So EE9 equals, and I get uh, 380 million meters, or 380,000 kilometers. That's correct. So that's how you get the distance between the moon and the Earth if you're an astronomer on Jupiter. Now, you guys are going to take the 97 pixels that you got for the maximum distance, multiply it by the scale factor to get the distance between Callisto and Jupiter in arc seconds. Then we'll use the same strategy that I used here to calculate the distance in meters to Callisto from Jupiter. And you use that distance in meters, go back to the, uh, let's see, go back to the email I sent, or the message that I sent. Let's see, where was it? Um, calculating mass, this guy. Uh, use the period that you get for the period of Callisto, use the radius that you get for the radius of Callisto using the small angle formula, and then uh, calculate the mass this way. Okay, so you'll put this is the radius in meters, so you'll put the radius, the distance between Callisto and Jupiter in meters here, and divide by one astronomical unit to calculate the distance in astronomical units. That's what you'll use to get the mass in solar masses. Then you multiply by the mass of the sun to get the mass in kilograms. So it's it's a bunch of units monkey business to get this right, but it's not too bad. Now, I'll show you the video that describes how the moon would look from the position of an astronomer. So I'm using Celestia to look at the Earth from the point of view of Jupiter. So I, I flew out to Jupiter, set myself down on Jupiter, and then I looked back at the Earth and... Uh, adjusted the field of view so it would be like a, an astronomer looking through a telescope at the Earth. And the question is, what do they see? I've got the time sped up 10,000 times real time. So what you'll see is 10,000 times uh, faster than what an astronomer would actually see, which would be just at any given moment the moon would be stationary. But if they watched over a period of um, days, they would see that the moon would go around the Earth and it would get farther and farther from the Earth until at some point, let's see, it would stop getting farther, it would turn around and start getting closer. So let's see what happens here. It's getting farther and farther and farther. Now it's going to reach some kind of maximum distance and hopefully it will turn around and go back. There we go, it's gotten to pretty much its maximum distance. And now it's going to start going back. And that's what I hope you saw happened with Callisto. Callisto is a moon of Jupiter. We watched it over the course of 30 days. And we saw that it got farther and farther from Jupiter. It would turn around and go back. And then it would go on the other side of Jupiter and turn around and go back. And if you go back and look at the spreadsheet, you'll see that the dots that represent the distance of the moons from Jupiter, one of them... One set of dots, which would correspond to Callisto, went out farther than any of the other dots, and that's because Callisto has the greatest sized orbit of any of the moons of Jupiter. Of the four, I'm sorry, of the four moons that Galileo could see and that we can see through the micro-observatory telescopes, it has the greatest distance from Jupiter, and so it has the greatest extent. Now, the point is, we measured the distance of Callisto from Jupiter in pixels because that's what we have in our image, pixels. Now we can convert those pixels into arc seconds, angles of separation between Jupiter and Callisto. And it's arc seconds that show up in the formula, the small angle formula, that we can use to calculate the distance of Callisto from Jupiter. Let's go through the same process that an astronomer from Jupiter would have to go through to measure the mass of the Earth. 